So today I want to walk you through a real simple script uh, to translate uh, DNA into a protein. So uh, what you're looking at is a uh, complementary DNA strand uh, that really represents the mRNA sequence. So uh, it's a very, very simple script. It comes from a uh, module called uh, the bio.seq module. So uh, at the beginning of the script, we're going to import uh, the, the part of that module that's used for uh, interpreting sequences or translating sequences. So uh, the first line of code is uh, from bio.seq import seq. So, uh, and then the second part of this code, we're going to want to bring in a uh, complementary DNA sequence representing an mRNA uh, from wherever we want to get it from. In this case, uh, I'm going to pull one from NCBI. And it's going to be the uh, mouse alpha actin and three uh, DNA. So, uh, so what you want to do is go to wherever you want to get your your cDNA from uh, and copy it in its entirety to your clipboard. Okay, and then come back to your script. And this is really important. Whenever you uh, bring the sequence in, you're going to want to have triple single quotes at the beginning and end of the sequence. Uh, the reason for this is, is these are multiple line sequences. They're going to have uh, carriage return characters and new line characters in them. Uh, and so Python is not great about uh, interpreting that. Uh, they want to keep those in there, even though they won't be visible in the, the string that you, you paste. But the way we get around that and the errors that that would produce is we use the, the triple uh, single quote. So now I'm going to use uh, Control and V and I'm going to paste that sequence in there. And you can see that uh, by all of it being read in between the quotes, that it, it's all been interpreted correctly. Uh, but we still got to get rid of those uh, carriage return characters, those new line characters. So uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the replace function of just uh, base Python. And we're going to name some uh, pre-DNA. So I got dpreNA2. Uh, we got dpreNA, uh, DNA pre. Uh, the original one is the one where we pasted the sequence. So DNA pre2 is going to be the original sequence, and we're going to replace the new line character with nothing. So we're going to get rid of the new line character. And then we're going to take that DNA pre2, and we're going to get rid of the carriage return character or the return character. Uh, and so we're going to replace that. And that's going to give us uh, DNA pre three. And then we're going to print DNA pre three, just so we can make sure that uh, those returns were actually taken out. Those new line characters were actually taken out. So uh, that's this, this command here, print DNA pre three. So that just allows us to inspect the DNA sequence. And now, uh, after that, we're going to set up a loop. And the reason we're going to set up a loop is because we don't know exactly where we want to start translation. Uh, this particular uh, DNA that we're looking at, this complementary DNA, uh, has the start code on right at the very beginning. Uh, but that's not always the case. You don't always have a clean cDNA to start with. So your start code on... Uh, may or may not be uh, at the, the the right position to where it's translated properly. So we want to see uh, the frame shifts to look at all three different uh, frames of the translation so we can find the one that, that's actually correct. So for that, we're going to use this for loop, and we're going to say 4x in the range of 3. So we're going to uh, translate it starting with the first position, the second position, and the third position. Um, so then... Within that loop, we're going to say that the, the DNA that we're going to actually translate is going to be equal to this DNA pre-3 uh, interpreted as a sequence. So this is where, in, the, in this particular uh, line of code, this is where we set the starting point. So it'll be starting at uh, position 1, 2, or 3. So depending upon the what time it is that we go through the uh, for loop. And then each time we go through this for loop, we're going to translate it to uh, protein. So we're going to have prot output, 
uh, equals DNA.translate. So DNA.translate or the dot .translate, uh, that's the function of the, uh, the BioSeq module that actually interprets and, and translates uh, the DNA to protein sequence. And there's really only one uh, you know, parameter that you need to set here, and that's the uh, translation table, the codon table that you want to use. Uh, and, and most of the cases, you're going to want to use table number one. That's just the standard uh, genetic code. Uh, but you can use any number of, of different uh, genetic codes. In fact, there, I think there's 37 of them. And these, these codes that you use are going to be based on the numbers assigned to them at NCBI. So if you go to this page here, which I'll paste it, I'll put it on the, the video so y'all can see it. Uh, but this page here is where you you see the different genetic codes. Number one is the standard. Number two is the vertebrate mitochondrial code. Uh, number three is the yeast mitochondrial code and so on and so forth. There's 37 of them listed on this page. So uh, that's where, you, or 33 it looks like, I thought there was 37, but 33 of them listed on this page. So this is where you get uh, these numbers that designate the, uh, the codon table to use. And then every time it goes through this, this and translates one of these different frames, um, we're going to output the, the uh, translated uh, sequence. So we're going to see the, the actual um, polypeptide sequence. So uh, it's very simple. I, I don't know how familiar you are with Python, but once you have this, this code written, uh, you just hit shift and enter and Python uh, executes your code. So you can see here uh, the, the first part of the output is the DNA sequence with no uh, new line or return characters in it. It's just straight DNA sequence. Uh, and then following that is three different translations of the same uh, DNA sequence. And you can see here, uh, if you want to look back at the, uh, the NCBI record for this sequence, uh, you'll see that they've actually already translated it for you. And it starts out with MMMV. So three methionines followed by a valine. And we can look here and we see, okay, here here's those three methionines followed by a valine. So it's actually the first uh, translation that, that is correct in this case. But there is uh, there are several uh, DNA bases at the beginning of this sequence that aren't uh, translated into the, the protein. So uh, sometimes you just got to look for that first ATG uh, and, and know where the actual translation begins. So in this case, it, it's uh, the first frame and there's looks like seven uh, residues so 21 bases uh, prior to the start of translate so that's how you uh, use translate uh, from the bioseq module in Python and this is a, a pretty basic uh, script here it's actually a very basic script um, but the reason I, I go over a lot of these pretty basic scripts with you, uh, is because in bioinformatics, a lot of times you, you need the tools. You need to know how, how to do these very simple things to put them together and do something larger. For example, if you were looking at uh, alternate positions to start translation, uh, you, could, you could look at different uh, positions where there's an ATG or where there's a methionine. In this case, we have three methionines right off the bat. Uh, you could potentially have uh, three different protein products there just based on starting it at each one of those. Or if you go further down in the sequence, you'll find uh, some other ATGs, some other uh, spots where it could be interpreted as uh, a methionine or a start codon. So you could put those together and look at uh, any number of DNA sequences uh, using Python versus having to go to NCBI and research individual records. So this provides a bioinformatic way of, of analyzing multiple sequences uh, and using this as a tool in able to achieve what, what you're trying to achieve um, bioinformatically. So uh, I hope this helps you out. I hope this is something that, uh, you know, gets you a little further down the line with your uh, bioinformatic journey. Uh, 
And if you like the video, if it helps you out in any way, uh, please like it. And also, uh, please subscribe to, to my channel.